So why is it subitizing and not counting that's going to help your children build their number sense and go on to understand part whole, odd and even numbers, doubling and halving, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division and associated aspects such as fractions. Let's find out. So I'm going to put these in front of me. Could be in any arrangement. Could even drop them down or keep them all the same way up for ease. But subitizing starts with noticing. So we can notice, for example, there are more here than there are here. And in time, just like we label an apple or a banana or an animal name, we can start to label this. What we see here, children know this amount and this amount are different. They would choose this amount if you offered them this of something they loved compared to this. But this in English is two and this is one and this is one. And if that is one, then that is one as well. And that is one as well. I can even move them. There's a one. There's a one and together there are two. So here's a one, here's a one. Together, they're two. So this is what we call perceptual subitizing. And it is about the ability to recognize one, two or three things. And you can see here that I've got four things. I'll come back to that idea about one to three at another time. But the reason I can, particularly like this, in this pattern, I know there's four because I've learned to recognize the pattern. When things are more randomly arranged, such as this, I'll move that one down a bit, you might find yourself, even as an adult, thinking, well, there's three there and another one here. So when I combine three and one, that is equal to four. So can you see there that you've identified within this whole that that's a part and that's a part? So we've got part, part there. And also that when three and one or this part and this part are added together, the total is four. You can also see that if you had four and you removed three, you're left with one. And if you have four and you remove one, you're left with three. So there is your subtraction. There's a lot more we can do as well. I play a game called Move It to Prove It. So again, we say in this amount, I can see a one and a two and a one, and I'm going to move it to prove it. So a one and a two and a one, and you move them away from each other so that it's easy to see. Really important for children. Let's put them back together again. What else can you see? Well, I can see a one and a three. Move it to prove it. There's the one, there's the three. The one's still there and the three, and of course it doesn't have to be this one. Could be this one, that three, that one, that three, and so on. Um, we could, what else can you see? Well, I can see two, and I can see two. Move it to prove it. When it's back being four, whether it's a recognizable pattern or a random arrangement, those two twos are still there and they're still there in multiple arrangements as well. That's the conservation of number, that it doesn't matter how we arrange them, those quantities stay the same. Another thing we can do, think about what we did there by splitting that into two twos and therefore making the whole split into two equal groups, that's halving. So I can see that half of four is equal to two. Here's one half, here's the other half. There's a two there and a two there, they're both halves of four. And I can also see that if I had two and I doubled it, so I reproduced it again exactly, that would give me four. And I can find that the way that's happened, particularly in a pattern, I've got this, I've doubled it, I've got this, or I've got this and doubled it and I've got this. So we've got part whole, we've seen addition, we've seen subtraction, we've seen doubling and halving, which is multiplication and division. What else can we do? Well, let's have a look at other ways four can be divided. So divided equally, it can go into a one and a one and a one and a one. So that's one of the ways it can be divided. We could split it into a two and a two, or we could just keep it as one whole group of four. That is exploring what we call factors. And it's something children don't tend to meet till much further up the school. But all factors mean is finding out how a number can be split equally with no remainders. And you've done that here. So what about odd and even? Well, odd and even, this is where our subject knowledge is really important. It's always really important, but often this concept is taught separately. Odd and even is about an amount's ability to be divided by two equally with no remainders. And it's about them being whole numbers because you can actually divide 
pretty much anything by two. If you think about a number, even if we stick to whole numbers, a number like seven, you can divide seven equally into two groups and you'd have three and a half in each group. But because you've split one into halves and you've encountered fractions there, that you're not dealing with whole numbers anymore. So make sure your definition is really clear. So divisibility by two means two things, be careful. So divisibility by two is, can this amount be shared into two equal groups with no remainder? So rather than go one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me, if you've got me here and you here, how many could we have each? You can see instantly, or you could experiment. Well, I could definitely have one, you could definitely have one. Oh, look, we could have two each. And that comes from that perceptual subitizing. So this is evidence that four is an even number. But also, it's about making, testing the idea, can it be made into groups of two? So obviously, four is a, it's a square number. So it's got it's going to have exactly the same answer here. We'll do it with a different number in a minute. But there's a group of two and there's a group of two. So it looks very similar to when we halved it a minute ago. If we change the amount and we want to know if this is an even or an odd number, let's apply that thinking again. So let's have a look here. Here's, you, here's me, here's you. How many could we definitely have each? Well, I think I could definitely have two and you could definitely have two. And I'm looking at therefore as a whole rather than that one for me, one for you and then counting them. Oh, look, we could both have another one each. So we've got an equal amount. We can see that in the pattern. And if we've learned to perceptually subitize, we know that's three and that's three. And together, those two threes are in six, randomly arranged or in a pattern. So we, what we did there was we split, we divided by two by dividing into two equal groups. The two-ness is the number of groups, nothing to do with how many are in the group. The other test was, can we divide this into groups of two? So the first structure was sharing, this structure is grouping. So I'm gonna create a group of two, and another group of two, and another group of two. Yes, it can. Hope you can see that, move it down a bit. So that's the other test. Be very careful because too many practitioners working with young children only focus on the sharing aspect and not the grouping aspect as well. And then with odd and even numbers tend to overemphasize the grouping aspect and not the sharing aspect. One mention as well, one thing to mention about um, odd and even numbers is avoid using socks because you might have odd socks that don't match up, but there might be still an even number of socks. By all means, use that later on, but the cognitive load is very high and it is, children will quite rightly say they don't match, so therefore they're odd. And we do talk about odd socks and all doesn't have to be as I say, an odd total. So I hope that's helpful, everyone. Look, free resources. Um, doesn't matter whether you use them this way up or that way up. You can decide whether the cognitive load is low. But try this for yourself and see how many skills you are teaching all in one place. That's exactly what I'm going to be showing you how to do in summer school, right from three-year-olds to seven-year-olds, and bring all of these skills together in a fun and meaningful way for your children.